Hello, welcome to a lovely yarn podcast. My name is Amber and I am coming to you from Western Pennsylvania. Today is March 12th, I believe. It's a Saturday and we are actually getting a March snowstorm. It was um, 50 some degrees yesterday. Woke up to at least six inches of snow this morning and it continues to snow. So uh, that's not unusual for this area though this time of year. It's really not. Uh, welcome to my podcast. This is about knitting. I talk about knitting, sometimes crochet and sometimes spinning. Although I have been, I haven't spun yarn since I think 2019. Isn't that sad? And I keep feeling like I, I want to pull my will out. It's actually in my, it's downstairs in like my craft room which is also doubling as Brad's home office. Brad is my husband. Oh, in case you're new here. So I live in Western Pennsylvania. I have three children, two of which, two of whom are still at home. And my husband's name is Brad. So yes, I, I sometimes forget that, that there may be new viewers. But anyway, I haven't done any spinning for over two years. Going on to three, that's crazy. So I hope to remedy that soon. But anyway, I just mostly speak about knitting and sometimes crochet because that is something else that I enjoy doing. So welcome. Thank you for watching. And I don't know. Um, we were in South Carolina two weeks ago. Or was that just last week we were in South Carolina? We were recently in South Carolina visiting our friends who live right outside of Charleston, right along the coast. And it was beautiful and it was so green. The grass was green, the trees were green, there were flowers blooming everywhere. It was absolutely amazing. So foreign to me to have that kind of greenness in, we went the end of February, beginning of March. So like that time of the year, it was just so, oh, it was so good to just be able to be out in the sun and the warmth and to be able to be out with just like a cami on it was just marvelous. Um, we normally visit our, we go to visit our friends every year. They used to live here in Pennsylvania. They were actually our neighbors. So, um, very good friends of ours, but we normally go in July. And this year we decided to go in our winter because it makes more sense. Right. Plus in, in July, it was always hard. I'd have to find somebody to watch our garden, take care of it, you know, water it, pick our blueberries. Cause we were always there during blueberry season. So I think this will work out better. Plus it gives us a nice respite from Pencil Pennsylvania winters. Um, but that was an exciting thing for us to do. And it's just been really busy with, you know, my middle son is, he's a senior in high school. He's so he's trying to figure out the college stuff. And, um, my, my youngest is, uh, my 16 year old daughter. She just got her learner's permit. So we've been busy with that. And yeah, it's just been, uh, I haven't had the time to get on here and film and then other things, you know, my heart's been a little bit heavy. My, so our oldest son is, um, Sergei and we adopted him from Akhtyrka, Ukraine in 2010. He was 13 when we adopted him. He's now 25. He got married last year for those of you that didn't know. So that's, that's just it's wonderful to see how, you know, the God's faithfulness through Sergei's life. But um, his hometown of Akhtyrka is actually in Sumi area. It was very close to the Russian border. And I don't want to get into all that stuff here because everybody, I think everybody knows what's going on. But um, his area was hardly hit. You know, it's been hardly hit in the invasion. And um, there's, and my mom's family, my mom is Ukrainian and her family is um, from more Western Ukraine, but still it's, so it's just been kind of like, mm, you know, it's been a little hard mentally. <laughs> so I wasn't even really in the mood to podcast, but today I thought, well, this is a good day. And I just finished my sweater and it is very snowy outside. So I'm at home. I'm basically just cleaning today. And I'm kind of doing that begrudgingly because I'm not really in the mood to clean. <laughs> so I did some cleaning. I thought I'm going to take a few minutes 
to film a podcast. It'll be a nice little break. I can catch you guys up on what I've been working on and then I'll have the rest of the day to clean. So that is just summarizing everything up really in a very tiny nutshell of what's been going on since I last talked to you guys. So we're going to just go ahead and get started on the knitting and my finished, my first finished object is the Drama sweater, which I am wearing and I'm actually going to um, insert some video of me wearing it because I think that's easier to do it that way than for me to just, you know, stand up and try to show you that way. So I'll go ahead and insert that video clip right here. And then whenever I come back from that clip, I will tell you more about it because I don't know how to do, how to talk over. <laughs> don't haven't figured out how to do that yet, how to do a talk over a video clip. So yeah, we'll pause and I'll be back with the details. Okay, so I have talked about this sweater. Let me see if I back this up just a tad bit. There's my dollhouse that I'm working on renovating, very slowly working on renovating. All right. Um, I've talked about this on multiple podcasts episodes in the past, and this is the second dream of sweater. The first one I knit for my daughter, Lily, and mine is identical to hers, only a larger size. So, my daughter's very petite, so there's no way I would fit hers. Um, I think, all right, let me, this is by Jennifer Steingast. And I knit it using Drops Air, which I've also talked about before because I really like this yarn. So these are my two colors. I'll put all the details as far as what the color numbers are and all of that down below, but it's basically like a charcoal gray, very dark charcoal gray. And then this is, this I do remember the name of, it's called pearl gray. So it's a very light pearlescent gray. And that is what my contrast color was. Um, it looks, I think it actually, it might look white on the camera because there is such a, a stark contrast between the two colors. I would say check out my Ravelry page for details, but I pro I may not even put this on there. I'm horrible with keeping that updated. I find it stressful to... I f okay, so here's my thing with documenting my knits. It, it's a really good idea because then if I would go come back to knit this again, I could look at my notes and say, oh, I knit that size and these are the needles I used and then if it's really, if it's the same yarn, only different colors, that makes it super easy to know. You don't need to gauge swatch. You can just cast on. But I don't know why I find documenting all of that very tedious. I almost feel like I would be better if I just kept it all in a notebook, which I've thought about doing because I do prefer pen and paper over computer <laughs> um, for things like that. If I'm writing a paper, I want a computer because I mean that it, your hand gets cramped if you're writing a paper with pen and pa pen and paper, you know, but to document things, I journal a lot and I'm so I'm used to that. I'm used to keeping track of things that way. I feel like I would prefer a journal, a knitting journal, but I just haven't done it. So, um, so I'm going to tell you the details here. And then if I do end up doing a Ravelry page, I can always add it to the description down to the video details down below but this is drops air and like I said I, I really like this yarn it's not itchy to me it's not itchy to my daughter she's very sensitive and that was why I knit hers in this particular yarn because she is very sensitive to most wools even socks if like she cannot wear socks that are regia yarn or opal yarn because it's just a little bit too prickly for her um, I usually, if when I make her socks, I usually 
we'll make it out of um, an indie dyed yarn that is because those are usually softer but um, I knit the fifth size which is like the 43 and three quarters bust um, when I knit this for my daughter, who, like I said, is very petite, I knit her the 37 inch bust and that gave her some ease in it. And then this, I don't know if you can, I didn't, I did not want this to be form fitted. So see, it's got positive ease, which is what I wanted. I don't really like form fitting anything. <laughs> I don't, um, I typically don't wear anything form fitted. So yes the, the 43 and three quarters which is the fifth largest size is is the perfect size for me and it's intended to have two to four inches of positive ease and i would say that i probably have that you know four inches i cannot remember if it called for waist shaping let me see here if it did i did not do it I often leave out waist shaping because again, I don't like fitted. It does. It does call for waist shaping. So I um, omitted that. I did not want to do that. Um, I just really like this sweater. It's, I love the color work. This is, this is beautiful. This yoke. I haven't blocked it yet. And I, honestly, I probably won't block it. Um, but I just love this yoke so much. It's, so pretty and then let me show you what else like the this on the bottom and then the sleeves to match it's just so pretty to me and this is my first sweater that I've ever knit in this black in like a black color I well okay I did knit a tee no I made it a sweater in a dark navy and I remember it being really difficult to to work on, especially at night. This wasn't so bad until I had to count. When I had to count my rows, it got a little tricky. So I had to use like a knitting needle and just pick up each little V-shaped stitch to count as I was counting rows. And it call, oh, another thing, it calls for three different colors in the yoke, but I just did the two because that's all I wanted to do. I, I, based, I did this exactly like I did lilies and I've shown lilies in the past, so. Yeah, and then the sleeves, I would say these are about, what is that, bracelet length? I normally make my sleeves longer than that, but I just, I tried it on because it is knit from the top down. And then once you get the body done, you go back and you pick up stitches to knit down the sleeves. And so I was able to try the sleeves on. I was able to try it on so I could see how long I wanted the sleeves. And I feel like that's a really good length for me as far as wearing this around the house when I'm doing things, not washing dishes, of course, but just other things like the sleeves aren't going to get in the way. But normally I would knit my sleeves a little bit longer than that. Um, as you can see, this yarn has a very nice halo. And I think because of that halo, it, it hides peeling. Um, yeah, so it's just, I'm really excited to have it done. And it was so funny that I finished it on a day when we were getting a snowstorm. Hopefully this will be our last snowstorm of the year, but that may not, I don't know. It's March. It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, so yeah. And I went outside to take a picture to post on Instagram. I didn't real. I knew it was cold, but I didn't realize how cold it was. And we have some pine trees, um, on the one side, well, on two sides of our property so I ran over to where our pasture is, where the pine trees also are. I took my camera stand and my camera and I was freezing because the wind was blowing and it was blowing snow. And um, I would like scrunch all up and wait until the wind would stop blowing. And then I would hurry up and push the timer on my camera so that I could run back and and then I ended up not even using any of those pictures because the wind was blowing my hair too much or um, I was I just looked painfully cold. So I ended up taking a picture right off my side porch. 
where the house was kind of blocking the wind so it wasn't quite so windy but it was quite cold out today it's i think it's 20 degrees fahrenheit which it's been colder than that here but the fact that the wind is very gusty today just takes it to a whole nother level plus i didn't have normally if i go out in this i would put on my winter coat which is down filled i'd put on a hat i put on gloves and you know, my snow boots and sometimes in it, when it's really cold, I put on snow pants. So I was, I went out in this with my snow boots. That was it. So it was a cold, um, photo session. <laughs> so this is my first finished object and, um, we'll move on to my second. I think I have three today. All right. The next one is the, um, Grande double wrap by Cozy Up Knits. So let me show it to you. Oh, I think, can you see that right there? That line? See that line? I made a mistake there in my brioche. <laughs> and I realized it later and I was like, mm, forget about it. I don't care. This thing's going to be wrapped around my neck. Nobody's going to notice. I don't care either. So um, it has it's done in a long rectangular shape. Like you knit it, you knit a long rectangle and then you, uh, so you start with a provisional cast on. And then when you're done with the whole rectangle, then you join the two ends. You knit them. I, I think it's a two needle bind off or maybe it's, gosh, I can't remember. Cause I finished this. I think I finished, I don't early February. I don't even remember. Maybe, Maybe it wasn't early February. I finished it an, enough uh, time ago that I don't remember. And then you, so you have two panels. It's a two color cowl. So you have two panels um, with just this textured stitch. And then you have two panels of brioche, one that runs vertically and one that runs horizontally. And it is made to wear double. Hence the name Grande Double Wrap. So let's put it on. It fits perfect. I like, I know I've said this before. If you've watched other podcasts where I've talked about cowls, um, I like a cowl that hugs my neck. Doesn't like make me feel like I'm being strangled, but I don't like the cowls that just lay here with this gape here because it doesn't serve the purpose. I, I feel like a cowl should serve, which is to keep my neck warm. But this, as you can see, fits, this fits perfectly for a cowl. And it's so nice and squishy from, first of all, from the yarn, as well as all the brioche. Brioche makes such a nice squishy fabric. I love brioche. Um, so it's just really nice and cozy. And the yarns I used, I used, um, I used one yarn from my stash that was by Bluebird Yarn. It was part of a set called Autumn Skies. So I don't have this. It's this dark blue. I don't have the actual name of that. And I actually won it in a giveaway probably three years ago. Um, the others, it's a singles base. And the other one, that, the yarn that came with it was a little too dark. I didn't think it was going to provide a nice contrast. So I ended up getting onto Madeline Tosh. And I ordered the Tosh Merino Light in, what's this color called? Horn. So this um, very light color is called Horn. And it has, actually it has um, specks of blue and, and stuff in it. So it goes well with the blue. I feel like I'm having such a hard time with my words today. Probably because it's been a long time since I filmed a podcast. This is all I have left of the two. So apparently I used more of this because I think they were the same yardage. Let me see. Oh, actually the blue had more yardage. So I must've just used more blue than the uh, horn color. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a very enjoyable knit and I actually knit it very fast. And if you are a someone who's never knitted brioche before and you're interested in knitting it, I would recommend this pattern because you're not doing, I don't think there were any brioche 
increases or decreases. There was an increase and decrease somewhere, but I think it was before and then after the brioche sections. I just love how squishy brioche is. And I also decided that I really like knitting with singles. I have hardly knitted with singles at all because I typically buy, you know, applied yarn. And after knitting this, I thought I want to knit with more singles because it just, it's so, it makes a squishier fabric, I think. You know, which makes sense because there's more air in that strand of yarn than if you're working with applied yarn. So yes, this is the Grande Del Wrap Cozy Up Knits. Very much enjoy it. Maybe I'll get to wear it the rest of this. I don't know if I'll get to wear it. In yes, I will probably get to wear it in, in this season. I was going to say I might have to put this away until next like winter, but probably not. It's only March 12th. So, but let me just show you a close up of the horn color from Madeline Tosh. I don't know if it's, if the color is picking up or if the camera's picking up the little specks of color, but I love that. I love when you have a very, there's a good spot, neutral, light yarn base with speckles. I love speckles. I'm a fan of speckles. Okay, so that is that. All right, and my third finished object is another pair of socks for my son, Ian. This is the secret, so don't tell him if you know him in real life. I don't know that anybody would, but um, don't tell him. Okay, so if you're watching for the first time or you you missed my last one or two episodes, my my son Ian is graduating from high school this year, and he, so he'll be starting college in the fall. So I had this idea at the beginning I guess it was at the beginning of the year that I would knit him a pair of socks each month. And then I don't know if I'm going to give it to him when he graduates or if I'll wait until he starts college. That might be a better thing to do. I can get more pairs done because honestly, he gra he'll be graduating in May. So that only leaves me. So I'd only have five pairs total if I did that because I just started this in January. Okay. I got them on. Now these sock lockers are more for my size, so they do look a little sloppy on them, but <laughs> it gives you a better idea and it's easier for me to show them. Okay, so this is the this is the latest pair that I've completed. So this is my second pair. So this is February's pair for his graduating box of socks. And this is a Regia in the office color, like colorway scheme. And it just has a color number that I'll put down below if you like this and you care to look it up. Um, so yeah, I, it's just a basic pattern. I, I, I just do vanilla socks when I'm using a self-striping. 64 inches or 64 stitches. I use nine inch circulars and, um, honestly, I just kind of knit until it looks right. <laughs> and then I start my hill flap. And then I um, also just use past socks that I've knitted for him to figure out the foot, how many to knit for the foot. So yeah, there's not much to say about this, just that I have his second pair and I, I need to cast on his, the March pair because it is March 12th and I haven't casted those on yet, but I do have the yarn, which I'm going to be showing you in a little bit because I just got it while we were in South Carolina. Okay, so that, I believe that was all that I have for finished objects. Yes, it is. So now I'm going to show you my one work in progress. It's hard to believe I only have one. Oh my goodness, that's a lie. I have two. I just forgot to grab the other one. <laughs> okay, so this first work in progress is a pair of socks. And it's a really fun, bright, cheery color. I love, I'm loving this. It's super garn active, which is, I think a German, I think it's a German. Oh no. Made in Italy. Oh, but then there, okay. So this is made in Italy, but then it also has a German address as well as a Czech Republic address on the label. 
So, and I'm going to show you this, but it's backwards because I don't know how to figure out how to flip that. Um, anyway, I will list it down. I'll put it down below the details. Here is the yarn. Okay. Bright, cheery, love it. Here is the first sock that I have done. I just need to kitchener stitch the toe shut. But isn't that so fun? I don't know if you can tell, but like these lighter stripes here are actually a minty green. My daughter said this reminds her of a sunset. And I was like, you are so right. You are so right. This is like a beautiful sunset. <laughs> so I have that one. That I just need to close the toe on and then I have the second one and I made a for, so for this pair I made a longer cuff than I would normally make I think I did 25 of two by two ribbing and normally I do like 15 to 18 but I just thought that it would be fun to do a longer cuff I thought this looked good with a longer cuff and um, I did the majority of this sock while at the movie theater on Monday, my husband and I went to see the movie Dog, which was really good, especially if you love dogs. And um, I, in the car on the way, I finished up the ribbing, and then I just worked on this during the movie, which I only worked on it for part of the movie because I ended up getting a really bad migraine. Um, mostly, I think, because I gave up caffeine on Monday. <laughs> I had had a slight headache all day, and then I think the like sound, the light, the flashes of light, and then the motion, because a lot of the film takes place in this guy's vehicle as he's traveling. And so there was a lot of, and I get car sick anyway. I just think it was just a bad combination. I ended up getting a really bad headache, but I did until I couldn't anymore. I, I knitted um, the majority of the sock there while we were watching that movie. So uh, these are pretty close. They'll be finished soon. By the t next time I podcast, they should be finished. And I'm just really enjoying them. But, you know, my daughter loves them. She said they're so pretty. And I was going to give them to her, but I'm like, oh, they're really, it's a really sturdy sock yarn. It's, it's quite grippy. And she felt it. She's like, nope, won't be wearing those because, you know, it, it's, it's a sturdy yarn and it is a toothy yarn. So keep that in mind. I like yarns, sock yarns that are like that. I think they wear a lot better. They're just tougher. <laughs> but if you're sensitive to the wool, then, you know, it may even, you know, I, like I said, my daughter can't, even on her feet, she can't tolerate it. I think it's more like around her ankles. So it may not be a good choice for you if you're sensitive. But if not, I love it because it holds up, holds up longer. Okay, so my friend Jody, who owns Flower Hill Fleeces, I've talked about her before. She has Icelandic sheep, and then she, that she sells their, the yarn from her sheep, and then she also hand dyes yarn. But she, um, I, she will sometimes like hire me to knit sample knits for her, so that when she goes to trunk shows or takes her, she she has her yarn and it yarns by design uh, in Oakmont, PA, which is the closest yarn shop to me so she will um have sometimes have me i've shown i've shown the what was it the shift the shift cowl that i did for her with her farm yarn from her sheep i showed that one in my podcast and then i knit another one i think it was last summer that i never showed because i knit it for her and she took it right away and then um, I never showed it. I just realized that now. But anyway, this is another one I'm doing for her. And it is Mosaic Knitting. It's called El Elegant Garland by Lisa Hannes. Mosaic Knitting is really fun if you wanna do something that kind of looks like color work but you're still intimidated by color work. Try Mosaic Knitting because it's it gives you the, the shapes by just slipping stitches. So it's, um very interesting but if you can see I don't know let me show you the pattern a little bit better okay so you get an idea because I'm not very far on this I actually started this in the car because when we go to South Carolina we have a 12-hour drive without stops so it's always longer than that um, so we listened to an audiobook 
which, oh, the audiobook we listened to was called Echo. I highly recommend it. Or just to read the book. It was, it was fantastic. Um, look it up if you like to read. So the, let me show you what I got done. It's kind of hard because <laughs> it's knit on the bias. So you, I started down here and then it's just growing and then it'll eventually start decreasing, I think. Yes, that is how it would work. And it looks sloppy because it is hasn't been blocked yet. Um, so I'm knitting this using her Oh, where is it? Oh, you know what? She, okay, she brought this up to me and she didn't, these, uh, these did not have yarn bands on them, but it's her Egyptian cotton fingering, I think is what this one is. I don't know colorways and I don't even know that that name is correct for the type of yarn, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said it is. So, um, these are the colors she brought me to do. I would not, I am not, so I like bright colors, but these were, would not be colors that I would choose myself. Although I think they look very nice together. And this is going to be for a spring show. So it's, it makes sense. Like the pattern's written to use, I think a Merino. It's a Miss Babs yarn. I can't. I don't see it's not showing me in an easy place but um, but it makes sense to use like an Egyptian cotton or a, you know a plant-based fiber and the thing about me is I'm not a big fan of plant-based fibers I always think I'm gonna do summer knitting and I'm gonna knit like a summer tank using linen or cotton and I have before but I've never really enjoyed the process of it because I just love the feel of wool. So I probably, I, I would probably, if I was going to knit this myself, I would knit a wool, but I am enjoying this because it's not, so I feel like plant-based fibers are a bit splittier than, than wool fibers. This is a little bit splittier, but it's actually got a pretty nice twist to it. So I really haven't noticed it, it's splitting. But yeah, that's, so that's what I've gotten so far. I just thought I need to get cracking on this because I was, I did all of this in the car on the way there and then on the way back. And I do drive for part of that to give my husband a break. So it wasn't like I was sitting there knitting the whole entire time. Um, but I, everything that's here was done in the vehicle on our drive. And I thought I need to get, I need to get back to this, which I will now. My goal was to get this sweater fixed finish so that I could move on. And so I'm going to start working on this now so I can get this done for Jody. And she's knitting one as well in different colors. I don't know if she's knitting this pattern or um, this Emiliana pattern because she had given me both and told me I could choose which one. So this was the other pattern that I could have cho chosen from. And this is by Malia Designs. Emiliana, which that's also a very beautiful, it's very similar um, to the Elegant Garland. So yes, um, if you wanted to knit this pattern, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a paid for pattern. It was part of my compensation to knit for her, to knit her a sample, but um, you can either knit it by written instructions or it's also charted. I'm using the charts because I just find them less like when I look at written instructions, it's easy for me to get lost in the instructions when they're written out like row by row. I rather just have a chart and then I just check the chart off as I go. Um, and I think that's how the Emiliana one is too. Let me see. Yeah, it's both written or charted. So yeah, Jody will be, if you are local, she will be in at Yarns by Design, I think in April. I think the show is in April and she will be, I know she's gonna be having this yarn there and she may be having other, she has all different bases. So, and I've used multiple bases of hers and I love them all, so. And I, I mean, this is a wonderful base. I just don't prefer 
plant-based fibers, which is why, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this base. Let me put it clear, make it clear with that. Okay, so that was my last finished object. I have one thing I'm gonna show you that I actually had bagged up and packed in my bag, my knitting bag, when we left for South Carolina because I thought if I need a break from the shawl, I will work on this, and I never even did. Um, it's funny because I don't even remember the name of the pattern now. I didn't print it off. It looked like it was going to be simple enough that I could just get on my phone and, um, you know, look at it that way. So it's, I'm going to put a picture of it right here so that you can see what I'm talking about. So those fingerless mitts, because this is the time of year that I will wear fingerless mitts. I wear them in the spring and I wear them in the fall. I don't wear them in the winter because it's too cold here. You need full gloves, <laughs> full on gloves in the winter here. Um, but I picked out, so I don't know, like three years ago when Knit Picks had one of their big cells in the winter, I bought a bunch of pellet, their pellet yarn in a bunch of different colors. And I have to say, I've never knit with this yarn yet. I have a whole basket of it. I just haven't knit with it yet. But I'm going to I'm gonna say that I'm going to probably really enjoy it. I, I can just tell by, the t by feeling it and by looking at it. But this is the color that I'm going to do. It's like a heather, like a dusty heather um, color. It's actually called bouquet heather. And let me see there. I need. Okay, so you can see it's cut, kind of got dimension to it, right? So that is what I'm going to knit them out of. And I was thinking that I may actually put a contrast cuff in. Either along the bottom or along the top or maybe both. Haven't decided on that for sure, but I thought it might be fun to do a like a two-tone fingerless mitt. Um, but yeah, that is what I'm going to be starting soon. Not yet though, because I need to get cracking on that shawl, that sample shawl that I'm knitting, but I just think this is really pretty and I will use them. I currently have two pairs of fingerless gloves that I wear often. Actually, they may be my only fingerless mitts. And it's funny because often I'm loaning them out to my daughter or my daughter's friends when they're over. So I uh, feel like I need to knit some more so that we have more available for myself and for other people when they're here visiting and need to keep their hands warm. All right. Yes. And this is in a beautiful bag by Olivia of This Handmade Life, which she just had a shop update. You should go check it out. I just bought this bag off of her in January, maybe. I was so tempted to buy another one, but I don't need, I don't need any more project bags. So I resisted, but if you need a project bag, go check out her shop update. I will link her shop down below. Okay. So, um, oh, I want to show you some things that I bought. I don't have a lot. Okay. So while we were in South Carolina, we went to Hobby Lobby. There was one just like a few minutes from my friend's house. I have Hobby Lobby about, oh, it's, it, it's a little over an hour from me, so I don't hardly ever go there. It's on the other side of the city, so I have to navigate through the city, through the tunnels, just to get there, and it's, so I just hardly ever go, like, maybe once every several years, <laughs> um, but when I saw how close Hobby Lobby was to Liz's new home, I was like, can we go there? So we went and I was so excited because I found yarn that I have been looking for ever since I saw it on Fernanda's podcast, Little Monkeys and Me. She was knitting a pair of socks out of a Peyton's Croy sock yarn and um, called Mid-Century Stripes. And I actually like really loved her socks. And so I found it at the Hobby Lobby in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So I was super excited. So I bought that to eventually cast on a pair of socks for myself. And then I bought um, yarn to make Ian's next pair of socks. And this one's called 50s Stripes. Yeah. And they were having a 30% off all their yarn sale that day. So that was nice as well. 
So I got that. And then another thing that I have been doing for the last two months, where did I put them? Okay, here they are. So have you guys ever heard of row one yarn? Like the word row, like row your boat. And then the, the word one, like the number one. Because I'm going to show you this and it's going to be backwards. So it does, it's not going to do any good. Um, they are a subscription-based yarn service, I guess is how I would say it. And they send you 10, 10 gram minis, at least 10, 10 gram minis every month. So in January, they were having a promotion and I got a really good deal. And you get free shipping. They're, they're shipped for free, but I got a, it was like $8 off. Must have been a 20% off. Yeah, I think it was a 20% off discount. So I think, hold on now, let me see. If this is from my first one. Yeah, I think this is from the first subscription. Yes. Oh, it must have been February. Because there's a little progress keeper that says amor, which means love. And then little, little glittery things. Oh, I don't think I ever showed those either. I don't, I don't think I did. Okay. So, this is what you get. A bunch of minis. And each month they come from a different indie dyer. So this one was, and then you get a little paper telling you about the dyer. So this dyer is Murky Depths Dye. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Murky Depths, yeah. Fiber artist Debbie Bressler. Okay. So she's been dying since 2016, and she's from Kingston, New York. And so when you get your yarn, you also get a list of the names of each of the 10 little minis. So um, let me see if there's anything else. And there, so yeah, this is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Mm -hmm. I think both of them have been so far. But isn't that so fun? I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I love, just... It's so fun. And honestly, I don't know how long I'll keep the subscription going. Um, but it is it is a really like fun thing to go to your mailbox. It, it's delivered the first of the month, I think for everyone, like the first week, sometime in the first week of the month. And then you don't know what you're getting until it comes. And I find that really fun, especially since it's a bunch of little minis. I wouldn't, I would not do that if it was a full skein, because if I don't like a full skein of something that I get, that's a full skein that I have to figure out something to do with. But you can almost always find something to do with a mini, even if it's just putting it in the heels and toes of a pair of socks. Okay, so that's what they send. And then they often send, um, they've sent both times they've sent like a progress keeper, a stitch marker, and then um, like they sent a little sticker and some tea. A bag of tea with this first one okay and then the one I just got in March I will show you make sure I get it they come in these little bags okay so this progress keeper no this is a stitch marker I think it's a little deer I think that's a deer We got that and then we have these are definitely deeper colors and let me tell you who the fiber artist is that made that dyed these polka dot sheep fine yarns and it again is an 80 20 base Amy Alexander is the owner and she is from Whitefish, Montana. Okay. And I think, so these colors here are based on 
No, no, that's wrong. Um, I was going to say, because she mentions uh, Glacier National Park, but then I think she's just saying that people who go to Whitefish, Montana, often enjoy Glacier National Park. Okay, I thought maybe these were inspired by Glacier National Park, which maybe they are. They have names like Cedar Island, Nebula, Divided Sky, Autumn Sunset. I don't know. I don't think they are. I don't think they're inspired by the park. Okay. So anyway, that, that is really fun. I've really enjoyed getting them. Like I said, I don't know how long I'll keep it up because, you know, it is money. And honestly, what am I going to do with all the minis? I already have so many minis. It's just for some reason, I love little skeins of yarn. And the funny thing is, is that I don't even use a lot of them. I just like to look at them. That's silly, isn't it? Anyone else like that? Okay, and then my last, oh, I have two more things. I don't think I showed you these. Did I show you guys this from Back Porch Fiber? Back Porch Fiber Co., Laura, uh, she's on Instagram and she has a shop. I will link both below. Look at these beautiful progress keepers. They're resin and wood. I love them. So yeah, three of them. Very, and they were very affordable. So I ordered those. She also hand dyes yarn and she sells those African Bulga baskets as well, which I love. I have, I've had mine for years. I have, this is one that I was keeping my Drama sweater project in, but they're the, um, fair trade artisan baskets. And, um, I, she sells those on her Etsy shop. They're really nice because you can reshape them with water and, um, they come in all different sizes. Like, I think that's considered Actually, no, that's, that might be a market tote, but I have a huge one that I actually store all of my mini skeins in. <laughs> it's big. Um, and then I have a couple of small ones that I store, like I have an embroidery project in one of those. And then another one I have kept like sock projects right now. It's just holding some random yarn. Um, but yeah, I really like those baskets. So if you are interested in those, check out her shop as well for that. And then her beautiful progress keepers. And I don't know how often she actually dyes yarn and updates the. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you is, um, a bag. And this was made by someone who is local. And I actually met her from working at the coffee shop. I work part-time as a barista at a local coffee shop and I, met her there and then I found out you know that she was a sewist and uh, she has a company that she's had for a long time I think she started it when her daughter was little it's called Missy May tutus and she used to make like a lot of children's uh, she made tutus but then she also made children's clothing as well and I think she still does that a bit but she makes a lot of bags and let me show you this bag this is oh my gosh it's a backpack Okay. It has this gorgeous, uh, what is this even called? It's like a, what is this called? It's like the snap thing. Okay. Is that not so awesome? She hand sews it onto the, to the bag. Here's the back of it. I actually picked this fabric out myself because I love this fabric. The squirrel, the rabbits, the flowers and the vegetation. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then when you open it up by just clicking that, it's got this really pretty color inside and then it has, um, pockets right here. So she actually makes these as purses. Like she has one that's even bigger than this one. This is the smaller size and she makes a larger size. And, um, she uses hers as like a backpack purse, which I bought it to use as a knitting bag, which I may use it as a purse too, but I thought that would be a great knitting bag that I could take my knitting on my back with me. <laughs> Super convenient, right? And it is just so well made. It's like nice and thick and it's got a lot of structure. I'm going to link her shop below because she does have stuff listed on her website and she yeah, she ships, she ships out. And like I said, I worked with her on picking this fabric. So this was like a custom bag for me, what she made for me. 
but yeah, I'm really happy with it. She dropped it off at the coffee shop when I was working on Wednesday. I was so excited to get it. Yeah. So that is everything I have for you this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And, um, I'll, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're getting into spring. It's that's oh my favorite time of year. I get so excited. In fact, it was, did I tell you it was like 50 some degrees yesterday? And then last weekend, um, it was in the sixties on the one Sunday and Brad and I went for a walk nearby where it's like, well, there's a path that kind of runs along a Creek. It was so beautiful. I was just, I feel like I come alive in the spring. My daffodils are popping up. I mean, they're covered in snow right now, but they were popping up. They were up about this much. And, um, I've already, I, I for, I'm forcing some tulip bulbs in the house and I've, I've already got my plan going for what I'm going to start, like my seedlings that I'm going to start for my garden. Just so excited. I'm so excited. So as I get closer to spring and then in summer, I definitely knit less and what I knit changes. Although I still knit wool. Tara from, a, I think it was Tara from a loop through a loop asked on Instagram, like, what do you guys, do you notice that you shift what you knit or the the fibers you use when you're knitting maybe she asked that on her on her last youtube or last video i can't remember but i honestly i, I told you i've tried to knit with plant-based fibers and i currently am but it's not what i prefer i just really like wool so a lot of times as it as the weather warms up i'll start working on more socks which honestly i must always have a pair of socks on the needles um or i'll do a like a lice a lice I'll do a lace weight or a um, fingering weight shawl. Like I'll do, I'll, but it's still wool because I just really love to work with wool. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm getting really excited to start the gardening stuff. I'm, I'm already planning that. Gardeners start planning that in January. <laughs> if not sooner, you know, like honestly, you kind of plan your next summer's garden when you're finishing up in the fall because you're saving seeds and you're putting everything away and you're kind of, kind of have a general idea. Um, and then in January, when the seed catalogs start to come, it gets really exciting because, and especially when you live in a place that's more Northern and you get the snow and you get a lot of gray days, it's nice to dream about your summer garden. So thank you guys so much for watching. And, um, if you like this video, I'd love for you to give me like a thumbs up. And, um, I appreciate when people do that. Um, and when you say hello, I love that as well. I love reading your comments. And so until next time, I pray that you are all blessed and thank you again for watching.